Greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a matter of great joy for me to be with you all once again and share from God's word the Bible. We are studying from Matthew's Gospel chapter 5, 6 and 7. The Sermon on the Mount. A sermon which came from the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ. As he came into this world to seek and save sinners unto repentance, unto salvation, unto heaven unto forgiveness of sins he gave a call to repent we learned that through many passages repentance is not an option but it's a command it is not a choice which the word of god gives but it's a command and no one is exempted from that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god in regard to need for repentance, in regard to need for salvation, in regard to need for a savior, everyone is equal. All have sinned. There is none who understand the way we need to understand God. There is none who seek God the way we ought to seek God. There is, they, they all have become unprofitable. That's what the word of God says. The way we should be profitable to God, the way we should be honoring God for who he is and for what he has done, the benefits and the benevolence which he has shown in our lives, we need to give him a central position in our life. And our unwillingness to do that to have a God-centered life is our sin and from that life we need to repent we need to turn our intellect should understand certain things our mind should perceive certain things about God and about us we should be sorrowful about our sinfulness we should uh, exercise our will and we should turn to God in total submission and subordination that is the call which the Bible calls us to repent and we already learned that and the result of that is uh, is so much of blessings and then we learned during our last session about the danger of false repentance we learned about Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. We learned about Balaam, the prophet. We learned about Achan, an army officer in uh, the land of Israel. Uh, we learned about the first king of Israel, uh, the king Saul. We learned about Judas, one of the uh, 12 disciples or uh, apostles. And we learned about Simon in Acts chapter 8. All these people at some point of time in some circumstance when the, the, the push of the pressures of the life was too much they expressed some sort of repentance but that was not biblical repentance that was not true repentance we learned the uh, uh, by comparing that there can be false currency and true currency and uh, we need to be sure that we have the true currency to deal and trade and uh, 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 do our business we need true currency otherwise when we go to a bank the the fakeness or the the uh, vanity of that paper will be revealed by the machine in which you check your note for the uh, 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 the truthfulness of that 
the same way bible will help you not only uh, to understand where you stand whether you are self deceived or not it is a ticket sermon on the mount is a ticket away from self deception that is what we have uh, learned during our introduction so we don't want to have this kind of shallow superficial surface level short lived repentance but we want the true repentance true repentance is a gift of god true repentance is not something what you and me who can generate in our life but it is a call which god gives it is a gift which god gives only thing what we need to do is that we need to have a receptive heart we need to have a receptive mind that this is something what god in his goodness and in his forbearance in his mercy and in his kindness that he is offering to me a sinner let me have it let me receive it on his terms not on my terms on his terms may the spirit of the lord help you to have that let us read two passages which explain to us the true true repentance is a gift of god true repentance is a gift of god acts chapter 11 verse 18 acts chapter 11 verse 18 when they heard these things they became silent and they glorified god saying then god has also granted to the gentiles repentance to life some time back we have read this verse god has also granted to the gentiles repentance to life so repentance which lead to eternal life repentance which leads to eternal heaven repentance which lead to heaven repentance which lead to god is granted by god again in second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 verse 24 to 26 Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty-four to twenty-six, and a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth. i will tell you repentance is a life where you come to grip with the truth truth about god truth about heaven truth about sin truth about the savior truth about salvation truth about everything what you need to know under the sun and over the sun in regard to eternity and in regard to a life of godliness in this world bible can give you the truth and when you receive the granted repentance from god then you are able to understand the truth know the truth perceive the truth and build your life on the basis of the truth bible says that sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth sanctify them by truth your word is truth john's gospel chapter 17 verse 17 one of my favorite verse sanctify them by thy truth your word is truth so bible is a book filled with the truth it will not uh, uh, take you to error it will never say that sorry here there is some mistake no it is inerrant scripture and it will talk about truth when it talks about sin it talks the uh, truth about sin when it talks about the savior it talks about the truth about the savior he is true life and eternal life he is offering you true life about the god we read that he is a true god a true savior Uh, the spirit of truth holy spirit is called the spirit of truth the bible is called the word of truth so if you want to be acquainted with the truth eternal truth you need to come to the bible and the entrance way to understanding and acknowledging and understanding the truth about all these things is repentance and repentance is a gift from god but i'll tell you in regard to this verse two verses where god granted them repentance god may grant them repentance that god lead them to repentance but we have a role to play it's like this 
many years back one particular organization used to send me free messages in a, an audio tape and after some time they started sending CD new uh, uh, CD with a good message biblical passages biblical message will be sent to you free of cost but before sending the CD or the audio cassette they will send you a letter a small letter with a portion to tear off at the end you just have to do one thing yes I need the CD free CD you have to tick in that block and then you have to put it in the self addressed cover which they have provided and the postage is, postage is going to be paid by them and you need to send it back and as you send it back you express your desire to have that free gift and they send it free of cost but I'll tell you the offer is for all those people who get that letter but the, the, the offer is for all but those people who are willing to put that tick yes I need it and put it in the cover and send it back self address the address is already there you need not do anything you need not write anything you need not fix a stamp everything is going to be taken care by them but if you are not willing to do that simple exercise of uh, acceptance letter or I want the urge if you do not express that the offer is for you but you will never uh, get that offer the same way repentance is all, uh, unto all God call all men everywhere to repent God command everyone everywhere to repent God gives you the leading to repent God is willing to grant you repentance but you need to exercise your will and you need to humble yourself before the word of God before the diagnosis of the word of God and understand that you are a sinner acknowledge that you are a sinner you need to have a savior you cannot save yourself if you can save yourself by your own good works you are the savior of your soul but you are not if you and me if we could save ourselves and get to heaven God would not have sent the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven Bible says that he has sent his son into this world because he loved the world he sent his only son into this world to make propitiation for sin propitiation for sin substitution for sin the punishment for sin was laid upon the Lord Jesus Christ he was crushed to death because he took your curse he took your death upon himself he paid the penalty of your sin it is the basic truth which the Bible makes very clear Paul told we preach Christ crucified why Christ was crucified Christ was crucified for your sin Christ was crucified for my sin and the offer of forgiveness of sin and offer of eternal life offer of repentance he is willing to grant it to you he is willing to grant you forgiveness of sin he is willing to grant you righteousness of Christ imputed into your life but you need to submit to him you need to accept his lordship over your over your life and for that you need humility for that you need gentleness in your heart you need to understand your predicament and you need to bow down before God of the universe if you do that God will grant you repentance true repentance is made in heaven I will tell you we look at things we uh, grab hold of our gadgets and devices and we uh, see uh, made in where made in Japan made in USA made in Germany I just uh, uh, mentioned a few uh, names made in India and though those names say that this is made in such and such country but I'll tell you Bible calls to uh, calls humanity to a repentance which is going to be granted from heaven by God where you will have a made in heaven repentance in your small heart what a blessing it is what a blessing it is to have a made in heaven uh, repentance carried into your heart and that heaven came down and filled my soul and it is going to transform your life forever for good and God's glory in simple terms in simple terms biblical repentance means turn from sin to serve the Lord Jesus Christ as the King of Kings 
turn from sin to the savior the lord jesus christ to serve him not just to get forgiveness of sin and then go away with your life for your own purposes and your own pleasures that is not true repentance if you are a person who have accepted the lord jesus christ as your savior and lord just for getting rid of hell and getting a ticket to heaven and you are living your own self centered sin centered life i call you my beloved please that is not true repentance you need to repent otherwise you will regret you will feel remorse at the end of the journey of your life as you come in front of christ if he has to pronounce to you i knew knew you not i do not know you as your savior and as my sheep we do not have a relationship i'll tell you that will be awful for you that will be awful for you in front of your family in front of your church in front of your society you are showing up a, a, a form of godliness but the true thing is going to be revealed the bible will go and expose everything in your life christ jesus will expose everything in your life so i want you to leave sin and cling to savior through true repentance and your life will be blessed true repentance now listen to me true repentance change our inner person from being self centered and sin centered to savior centered and scripture centered if you are having a savior centered and scripture centered life you are truly repentant but if you call yourself a repentant person and if you are sin centered and self centered and self promoting and selfish you are not repentant please don't uh, continue in that road that road will come to a terrible end but i'll tell you the true repentance lead to a way uh, everlasting life eternal bliss and eternal rest i was just putting a, a, an introduction to the sermon on the mount sermon on the mount is an explanation and exposition of what it means to truly repent Uh, we are going to see uh, this particular uh, sermon on the mount from a space shuttle view space shuttle view means all three chapters matthew's gospel chapter 5 6 and 7 i believe that people who have started listening to these messages uh, for the past three classes you must have read by yourself uh, by this time if you have not read i urge you to get hold of a bible read matthew's gospel chapter 5 6 and 7 for yourself this is a single occasion single message which the lord gave to a big gathering or a big crowd and here jesus christ is calling you unto two things under two broad headings you can have a space shuttle view of this particular sermon on the mount space shuttle view means you are not going into verse by verse study which we will do god willing we will do that and we'll try to understand every verse and every word and we'll try to absorb it into our life and we will allow the word of god to transform our life for good that is what i intend that is my prayer for the days to come but i'll tell you as of now when you look at all these three chapters together you can study under two broad headings call to repentance is a call to righteousness call to repentance is a call to blessing just keep it in mind call to repentance is a call to righteousness call to repentance is a call to blessing a call to holiness a call to a deep blessing which you have never imagined in your life now let us look at the first point which i have told call to righteousness means what call to righteousness if you look at all these three chapters together we'll just go through some sample verses we will deal with those verses carefully word by word we'll go through those verses but as of now to understand that this under this broad heading call to righteousness and call to blessing let us read few verses matthew's gospel chapter 5 verse 6 Matthew's gospel chapter 5 verse 
blessed are those who hunger and thirst and now the word for righteousness hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled so a person who is repentant that person will have a hunger and thirst for righteousness we learn about that word righteousness here doing everything right doing everything righteously thinking everything right and thinking everything righteously the attitude which i have should be right right before god and that is a a hunger and thirst which god gives to a repentant person matthew's gospel chapter 5 verse 10 matthew's gospel chapter 5 verse 10 blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven so it's talking about people who are repentant it's talking about people who are part of the kingdom of heaven and such people will be persecuted for what not for doing anything wrong but doing right things and yet getting persecuted it is a, a it is a, an irony and it is a a, a truth that we have seen through the ages seen through the history of church the people who stood for god people who proclaimed the truth of god people who called people to have a god centered life such people were persecuted my prophets were persecuted jesus christ was persecuted peter paul james john everybody they were persecuted for what for righteousness sake for gospel sake for christ sake for god sake and for the sake of good they were persecuted and here again in matthew 5 10 we read about the the persecuted for righteousness sake righteousness sake then when we come to matthew's gospel chapter 5 verse 20 matthew's gospel chapter 5 verse 20 for i say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven what an exclusive statement what a daring statement from the lips of christ matthew's gospel chapter 5 verse 20 he is telling unless we we'll read in luke's gospel that unless you repent you will all likewise perish jesus told here he is telling unless your righteousness exceeds unless your righteousness surpass the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven let me explain that verse a little bit right now righteousness is righteousness means doing and thinking right things always it is not that half right things and half Uh, wrong things and you call yourself as righteous no you are not righteous in the eyes of god righteousness means doing everything always righteous thinking everything righteous always doing everything righteous always if you look into your own heart you know that you do not have this righteousness you have made many statements which you know that it is wrong you have done many things which you know that it is not right you have made choices which you know that it is not righteous so you are not righteous from human standard you may be better than somebody but in god's eye you are not absolutely righteous and here the lord jesus christ is raising the bar of his expectation telling that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of scribes and pharisees scribes and pharisees means what they were the people who wrote and rewrote the scripture they were uh, uh, studying the scripture and they were trying to follow the scripture to the best of their ability from human point of view and such uh, a human uh, achievement of righteousness where it can take it's got a limit because we are imperfect people we are sinful creatures so the righteousness which we can achieve it's got a limit 
scribes and Pharisees reached that limit of righteousness and then God is telling that righteousness is not going to be sufficient for you to enter the kingdom of heaven it should surpass that righteousness and then suddenly disciples are they are asking then who can be saved none that which is impossible with man it is possible with God that is what through the Lord Jesus Christ God is offering you a righteousness of his own son being credited into your life where you will be able to stand before God righteous covered in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and that call of repentance is unto a life of righteousness imputed righteousness is going to impart righteousness into your life where you hunger and thirst for righteousness seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so this call unto righteousness is going to be a blessing in your life in the days to come as we study we will be able to understand and perceive and accept into our life may the lord bless each and every one of us let us look to the lord in prayer loving heavenly father we thank you and praise you for the sermon on the mount thank you and praise you for matthew's gospel chapter 5 6 and 7 where the son of glory as he visited this earth to save sinners he explained the the uh, nature of a repentant life how does a repentant life look like as we look at these passages enable our ourselves to find where we stand if we are in a dangerous ground of shallow short-lived repentance help us to be truly repentant biblically repentant unto god for unto salvation so that our eternity will not be at stake our eternal well-being will not be at stake Lord I pray for all the viewers that they will take uh, seriousness into their spiritual life they will take the uh, the spiritual life very serious in their life It'll enable them to uh, open your word the Bible and understand this eternal truth for their own good and for thy glory in Jesus Christ most precious name I pray Amen Shanti Nee